Hey everyone, what kind of laptop is this you might be wondering? Well, it's Tag Barbie, so that might give you an idea, but I bet you're not expecting this. Da -da -da. It has a keyboard and the tiniest little screen in the middle. Pretty sure this is some kind of uh, activity, um, educational games. What do we got here? Word, maths, memory, logic, something to do with animals, keyboard skills, music, some games, and Spanish. If you want to learn Spanish, perhaps this will teach you. So the problem with this poor little thing, it's had the wrong power supply uh, plugged into it. Uh, it requires six volts and uh, uh, young'uns being young'uns and not really knowing the difference between one plug and another uh, it took 19 volts has a few Phillips screws around the side uh, and something here for a battery interesting I wonder I wonder if there's a battery in it who needs a screwdriver when you got a spudger anything solid will do the job they actually suggest to use a coin. Most people have a coin lying around the house. You can probably get away with a butter knife. And no batteries. All of the screws removed. It looks like the keyboard is going to, well the whole top assembly is going to lift off. A couple of clips on the side. Feels like something's holding it on. Did I miss a screw? Is there one? I think there's one hidden under the sticker there. It does feel like it's held on by the middle. No, oh, no, that's solid. Always something hidden under the rubber feet. Okay, there we go. Have a look, see underneath. Make sure we're not pulling any connectors up. Okay. It looks like the whole everything's attached to this upper section, and the hinges are going to come out. There we go. The screen and hinges come out as one. So we'll get rid of that. There we go. We have a single board construction. Uh, there's a flex coming up underneath which runs to the keyboard and mouse uh, pad and uh, we also have a uh, card reader in the side um, and speakers. Very basic. Uh, this button is a, I think it's a reset button. Uh, poke a little pin through the case to get that couple of screws now the row of capacitors along the top there uh, look all right I have to say the quality of the soldering and along here leaves very little to be desired typical rush production in fact these these wires appear to be frayed and shorting out that go to the card reader. Yeah, that's almost falling off completely. I'll re-solder those. But we've got to get it working first. We've got the cables up to the screen. And what else have we got? Okay, to, to oh, flip the board we're going to have to remove the battery wires and possibly some of the screen power could even be a backlight of some sort nothing to see here folks just a basic unsoldering of wires move along move along Uh-oh, look what I've found. 
fluff. And you know what this kind of fluff comes from? Exploded electrolytic. Lovely. Totally not filming this for your benefit. I just want a reference as to what color wire goes where. Right, let's flip her over. Oh yeah. One little can over here. We've got a regulator surrounded by tape. Possibly a regulator, some transistor. But, uh, definitely this cap's blowing its guts. We dissect all of that. Stuck to the tape. There we go. This one is rated at 10 volt. 47 mic. Definitely got a bit hot there. If we uh, put that tape off there. I wonder why they taped that down to the side of the cap. Maybe to stop it wiggling. That might have got hot. We've got a, a resistor here that's uh, desoldered. I'll give you a closer look at that in a minute. Surface mount uh, lost its colouring. Looks like it's lost its writing a bit. It's gotten really hot. When working on a board assembled in such a way, you can almost guarantee that these thin wires with their dodgy soldering are gonna we're gonna have one or two snap off after you flex it a couple of times. So take a good photo of uh, the order in which they are. Here we have the resistor that I mentioned. It's gotten rather toasty and uh, definitely desoldered from the uh, board. We have a 2R0, so we have a 2 ohm resistor there. This one has uh, 470 still on it, even though it's rather burned. So we can measure that and see if it is indeed a 47 ohm. It's pretty much out of circuit at this end, so we should get a fairly accurate reading. Uh, 51.4. Um, a little on the high side. I might have another one I can put on there. But, uh, anyway, power is going to come through from our DC jack. Give you a bit more context. DC jack and... Uh, and through here, into here, that is a inductor. Looks like we've got a ground through here and positive through here. Then into this diode, so we'll need to check that diode's okay. And we're looking for our standard half a volt drop on one of these, which I am getting 0.568. Uh, this is a zener, so this will form some kind of regulator. So let's just check that that hasn't gone short. That's 0.7 that way, nothing that way, so that's looking good. Um, that's why that resistor would have burned up, because the zener would have been conducting an excessive amount of... Uh, current to try and maintain the voltage uh, required at this point uh, thus drawing a lot of current through here so we've got our 19 volts coming through this resistor back through this resistor to the zener to maintain this point at whatever zener voltage that is set at and I can't quite read that so who cares, but with a 6 volt in, it's probably maintaining 5. And uh, what's this? This is a 
ST8050C. I can look that up and see what that is. I don't like the darkening of these two in the middle, so hopefully that didn't suffer as a result. So the data sheet said it's an NPN transistor uh, rated at 40 volts and 1.5 amps and uh, right to left emitter base collector we go base to collector base to emitter base to collector we're getting 0.6 of a volt drop each way and collector to emitter is not shorted so it's still okay so the only casualty at the moment appears to be the uh, input capacitor which was 10 volt rated and the uh, resistor for rail regulation now if we have a look over here at the rest of the board we have a chip on board we have I'm going to say that's our audio amplifier IC because that runs off over here to a headphone jack and our speaker uh, speaker connections and here we have some transistors uh, beside where our uh, card reader comes in so are they going to be used for signaling on those lines perhaps quite possibly a couple of diodes there now they're not zeners but uh, have a quick check there and just see if they're okay yeah that one's fine half volt that one is also half a volt drop so one other test you could do would be a resistance check to uh, ground uh, on the uh, output of this transistor just to see that the rest of the circuit there's no there's no hidden shorts as a result of the over voltage but it looks like the Zener did its work until the as soon as this melted off we had no voltage coming through to the Zener which meant there was no drive to the base which meant this shut off which would have protected the circuit as well so yeah everything's probably fine Let's uh, clean that up, that resistor up. So I should see if I've got a new 47. Oh, what happened to my wick? My wick seems to have run out of flux. And for those of you who might be wondering how good the Amtec flux that one might obtain from AliExpress that may not be Amtec flux, well, I think it works just fine. I was using uh, Chip Quick. But my sources are expensive, so I grabbed a couple of these, and uh, yeah, I'm not really finding a lot of difference at all in uh, performance, but uh, um, maybe slightly better, actually. Yeah, we'll get some of this fluff off the board too, shall we?
This is why you should never throw anything out. This was a JVC car radio and it has the perfect tiny little caps on it that we need. It is a 47 mic 16 volt. Who cares if it's a few more volts capable? That should fill the gap quite nicely. It's getting late in the evening. Come on, there we go. It's like pulling teeth. Someone needs to make some uh, pliers that have a uh, cylindrically rounded end for hanging on to caps in circuit so you can uh, get a good grip on them when you're trying to pull them out. Catch our little solder flake there. Don't want it running around on the board. So yeah, the keyboard flex just folds up like that and sits against the underside of the board. So I just want to make sure that these connections are nice and clean. As such, you'd have to be careful not to strip out these mounting screws because that's all that's holding the board against the, uh, the flex. So nice and gentle, just enough. Now for the good old moment of truth. Connect up our bench supply. It's not drawing any current at the moment. And uh, we'll push the on button. Hmm. Interesting. A bit more work to do. Well, look at this. I should have thought to check this, but our little 2 ohm input resistor is now close to 2000 ohms. Yeah, of course it would have got just as warm as the one beside it. So, yeah. Whoops, bit of an oversight. Let's switch that one out. Okay, round two. Let's connect the power. Ha ha ha! Hi, Get ready for some fabulous learning games. Press enter to select a category. It looks like it's got an RGB LED in behind her, just to give it a bit of a color. Hmm. Let's try logic. Select a game to play. Shopping. Go with the flow. Let's go with the flow. Level one. Find the missing number. Oh my, I wonder what it could be. Fantastic. Okay, enough of that. Power off. Catch you later. Well, I have to say this is uh, designed to handle over volt input. Other than the input cap uh, not being able to handle it, the Zener diode did its job. Um, and sacrificial resistors, so yeah, somewhat childproof I suppose. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you later! Catch you later! Catch you later! Catch you later! Catch you, catch you, catch you, catch you, catch you, catch you later!